forward to it. BMG versus Sync Esports here. And the first time they're meeting up here in cycle two of the Carnage and Cadavar Pro League. Once again, joined by Mini Mega as my co-caster. Welcome back. Excited? Yeah, man, I'm extremely excited. These are the, obviously the two biggest teams in Hon right now. And, I mean, we saw Zinc play absolutely fantastic the last um, series against Recent Gaming. And, I mean, if they're playing as good as, as possible, I mean, this is going to be a great series. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Again, so we were talking about it. Sync Esports seems like they got some good momentum going for them right now. They are looking strong. They they looked very strong just earlier today against Reason Gaming, where they won two games to nothing. BMG, yes, they did go 2-0 in both their and well, they ultimately won both their series. Is my point uh, yesterday? But uh, again, they haven't been playing a whole lot recently. And the last big time matchup was again, when they played Sync was obviously in the grand finals of Cycle 2, which has been now three, just over three weeks even now ago. So you kind of wonder how that may face some things uh, going into this. But it is BMG after all. It's not like uh, these guys haven't been around the block before. So again, to say the least, I'm expecting some good play. But it's going to be interesting uh, to see how these teams come out here in this matchup. Now, you know, speaking of earlier, we did notice we made point that Sync Esports they ran War Beast, both of those games. Uh, against Reason Gaming, and KZU played the very, very well. It seemed like it's kind of making a comeback now, as we saw that. And guess what? BMG, their first ban is Warby. So <laughs> I can't say I'm too surprised yeah. seeing that here. No, and I think it's the right band to make that. We saw a lot, obviously, Keizu's sort of signature hero was the you know, Warbeast back when he used to play in Stay Green, and, and he's still got the absolute skill to play in Zinc now as well. And I mean, that hero is just so, so strong, and particularly in a great person's hand, and Keizu mm -hmm. knows, knows how to play that hero completely. And I think it's the right move coming out from BMG. They just don't want to face it. Like, the hero can be like really strong against sort of split pushing um, and stuff. And if BMG want to take team fights, which obviously they, they want to do, and um, then banning out you know, split pushes like Warbeast is, is, is the right call to make, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Again, we we were putting. I I was willing to put money on it. Even I mean, I was going to say, as long as somebody paid attention to the earlier series, which obviously they did here, we were probably going to see that Warbeast ban. And sure enough, that happens. But as far as everything else going on here, uh, Warbeast, Kronos, Magnus, Rhapsody, overall the bans. Uh, you had the first pick, Drunken Master, as a result of that in Empath actually, Torture into Kraken, and then Glacius then goes actually into Swift Blade. So kind of an interesting draft here. I, I want to say too. I mean, valuing the Empath here and see. Esports. Well, yeah, the reason the reason why Flens Master did this is because the Drunken Master Empath combo is so so extremely strong. Like you can't give them um, you know, both the Empath and the Drunken Master. So that's the reason why Flens Master picked up the Empath here. Um, obviously, the Empath is a strong hero, but I mean, it doesn't obviously warrant a, a first pick. But if if Drunken is, is picked up uh, for BMG, you know, the Empath was is the only really move that Flens Master could make. I mm -hmm. mean, um, also it does uh, weld uh, or you know mold quite well with the Swift Blade pickup here in the third pickup. And um, particularly that BMG does look like they're going to rotate some kind of tri lane. And we mentioned before, obviously Empath Swift Blade sort of tri lane extremely, extremely strong. Um, particularly if, if it's in a tri lane, so. Yeah. The Glacius uh, for BMG, that is going to be fun to see uh, in the hands of Seal Kid, most likely. Again, not your, not your go to support nowadays, but especially with that tri lane becoming more and more prevalent, uh, he definitely shines in that role, especially with the Swift Blade partner. But as you notice, Sync again, they're the ones that have the Swift Blade. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see how that ultimately matches up. But especially with these top tier teams going at it, if they match up at tri versus tri lane, that should definitely prove to be very, very entertaining on top of everything else. So Dr. Repulsor, Chipper, Parasite, and Bubble so far. Uh, coming out with the ban. So you see Sync valuing that chipper, uh, or excuse me, I was going to say see BMG valuing the Parasite ban even. Uh, there is still an Ophelia on the board uh, to be coming out, but you think they're not nearly as worried as that one there? No, because I think, I mean, Ophelia is a strong hero, don't get me wrong, but Ophelia is kind of only strong in, in the sort of team pushing lineup. And I mean, Empath, Kraken, Swift Blade doesn't really rotate to some kind of hard pushing strategy um, and so leaving a Philly on the board it's like kind of counter synergy if Sync decides to pick it up so there's no need to really um, ban it. Parasite on the other hand does uh, tend to sort of you know, heavy gank which is like the Swift Blade Empath um, kind of style of hero so I think you know, that, that was the right ban to make. Yeah. You see Hag and then Bombardier coming out with the final. So, yeah, a couple of you know, not your usual bands, but at the same time, both Chipper and Bombardier, heroes that BMG has been playing uh, every now and then, not not really surprised by any means. And, in fact, most recently we saw Chipper a couple times yesterday, I believe, by uh, by BMG even. So taking out those very aggressive heroes that are good against you know the under level. But, well, there you go. Speaking of Ophelia, they pick it up themselves, actually. 
Yeah, so that obviously is going to tend to be probably a carry torturer, which is something I didn't really expect to be, and I don't hmm. think Zinc decided it or expected it to be either. Um, but I think it might actually be the right call to make. We talked about how Empath uh, Swift Blade you know, tri lanes are incredibly strong, and then picking up the affiliate, it allows um, BMG you know, not to tri lane and maybe focus on other lanes. Uh, whereas if they picked up or ran the tri lane, then they'd be going against you know, such a strong uh, tri lane like the Empath Swift Blade tri lane. So I actually do like that pickup. Um, and then there's still quite a lot of pushing potential in BMG. They've got the Torture, obviously, and they've got the last pick as well, which might tend to a more pushing sort of style of lineup mm -hmm. here as well. Um, I mean, it's just dependent on what Zinc's other picks are now as well. And um, they're right clicking the Witch Lab. I don't think that would be the hero <laughs> to go, particularly after um, the affiliate pickup. We saw it in you know the game against um, Breezing Gaming, yeah. but I don't. I honestly don't think that the Witch Lab pickup was a was a big feel, uh, was a big. Um, no. sort of factor in that game. <laughs> I mean, just that ult, we had to do a lot of just the lineup all together, and then especially that Warby's factor again, uh, as we were going back to. So, yeah, I, I mean, you do at the same time, he, he shows that he can be pretty solid in that tri lane setup. Okay, they, they are okay. going to go. Yeah, they, they do go Witch Slayer in the end. So, um, uh, I mean, again, it, yeah. Yeah, the only problem here is that, you know, we used to see um, like Puppet Master picked up all the time, and then we started seeing Drunken Master because of his ulti. It kind of um, obviously uh, counters him or sort of counters Puppet Master because of the untouchable. It almost acts like a permanent nullstone. And particularly with Witch Slayer, a lot of um, single target spells like Mineration, Power Drain, and Silver Bullet, that always all kind of gets countered by Drunken Master's Very ulti. True. So the Witch Slayer pickup to me doesn't. I don't know, it doesn't seem that... Like, I mean, I think the hero is good, but maybe not in this lineup. And Lodestone, okay, Ooh. this is the hero we haven't seen in a long yeah. while, but I still think this hero is still really, really strong and um, can work, particularly in the pushing sort of teamfight lineup. So, yeah, I'm really liking BMG's draft I, right now. I think you had brought that up, Reese. I don't know if it was you. I think it was you. We, we yeah, randomly were talking about it, yeah, like like a hero that we don't really see too often now, even though we think it could be powerful. And, yeah, Lodestone was the one that came to mind. And, and yeah, he got some nerf, sure, but uh, not enough to really justify him just completely disappearing. I think it's safe to say. So, I mean, this guy's a lot of burst potential. Great initiation, both with the portal key and without, of course, with that rocket drill. So, uh, and, and he, he's, he is kind of one of those, if you're underleveled on the opposition, then he will take advantage of that. So, you got a couple supports here in which slam empath could cause issues. Yeah, and I have to admit, this BMG draft is definitely in favor in, in, in terms of other than Zinc. Like, just the, everything about BMG lineup, it just has a lot of synergy to it, and, and it makes sense. Like, they knew probably exactly what they were going to do, even from the start of the draft. Whereas Zinc, it looks a little bit awkward. I mean, like, the short lane sliver, I normally only picked up um, you know, when you're running like a hard pushing sort of team fight lineup, you know, where they have like Sliver, Raps, Ophelia, not so much maybe for like dual lanes or even tri lanes. Um, I mean, it can work, but I think overall BMG have definitely um, got the, the drafting advantage in going into this game. Yeah, it really makes you wonder. You're you're right. It's uh, every, I think everyone was on board in the sense that you saw the torture Glacius there from the initial three picks. You're like, oh, they're running dual support. They're gonna try to want to do their trial on their own, and yeah. so we'll just go try that ourselves. Said Sync, but obviously, again, that Ophelia pickup maybe threw everyone off guard, and and one of that kind of uh, set the tone for the draft eventually, and. Obviously, yeah. so maybe a little bit awkward for Sync Esports as far as what they're trying to accomplish here. But now, with that said, now they got what they got. Obviously, do you still expect them to go kind of a tri lane setup here, aggressive maybe? <laughs> I mean, they obviously definitely can. It's probably the, the, what they're gonna do. But at the same time, they can easily run two dual lanes. But at the same time, running a dual lane with Sliver is just awkward because I mean that hero is so good on the solo, so you don't really need to, to have a hero with it. We talked about actually in, in game two, I think, when Reason Gaming was had the Master of Arms, talking about like if you're gonna have um, like Get, if you're babysitting at like a hard carry, then obviously you want the hard carry that has a, a struggling laning phase because that way it's most likely going to have a better you know, later to mid game stage. Mm -hmm. um, and so dual laning a sliver, although it's good, it's like you don't really want to do it. Like you pick up the sliver just because they're in, in insanely well um, you know, laning sort of phase he does. And, and dual laning it just makes it a little bit awkward and you know, reduces his levels and stuff. And it's just not really needed. He could get almost the same farm if he's dual laned or, or solo laned. So it's obviously best to put your sort of resources in, in winning other lanes if so sliver's going to you know, win it solo. Yeah. So we do see here Limp is actually playing the torture. Kind of interesting there. Was, you know, okay. You'd almost expect maybe Fusi to be playing that. Uh, uh, torture and then have limp just on the drunken master but they got Fuzi on drunken master so does that give you some insight maybe what we should see here maybe the short lane drunken master instead yeah we might even see actually the Jonas of um, um, bottom because I think BNG might expect the troll lane coming out from zinc and obviously you'd want to dodge uh, with the low stone instead of the drunken not only because uh, low stone has the, the superior you know, escape mechanism but also if the uh, drunken master goes top he's most likely going to be 1v1 although he's pretty big going against the sliver he's going to get at least more farm than going against a troll lane so yeah and obviously you want to focus the farm on, on drunken as much as possible <clears throat>
All right, here we go. So Sync Esports good to go, and so is BMG. Game number one, again, a best of the three of the first time these teams are meeting in cycle two. They met three times in total last cycle, uh, both in the regular season where they split against one another, and then, of course, BMG won the final matchup, uh, taking them out uh, two games to uh, – or it was three games to one, I believe, if not mistaken, uh, in the grand finals. Uh, there to, to claim victory and take home their share of the $8,000 prize bill. So another $8,000 on the line here for Cycle 2. And you know Sink Esports wants some revenge, but again, this is just the beginning of what's still the rest of the season and eventually into the playoffs, of course. So anyways, that's enough hype for now. we got the match here when it's all said and done. It is going to be the Witchler and Pat Swift play. They are headed towards the bottom lane, so sure enough, that aggressive trial lane going to be coming out. Uh, Drunken Master for now is setting up down here, but you, you, if, the, if they pick up on that information, you got to think Lodestone is going to ultimately, in fact, it seems like something's kind of up, and yeah, they send Lowstone down here. I think that's the right decision to make, because obviously you want to have your suicide hero against the strongest lane possible, even if it's like you know, in the short lane or long lane. Mm -hmm. It just normally, you know, we call it suicide lane, and it, might, it mainly ends up being the long lane just because of the disadvantage, but if you're facing three heroes in the short lane, that's obviously going to be your suicide lane. So um, it's, I think it's the right call to make to put Fuzzy top. They've even pulled in a little bit of region as well, so he'll at least have a little bit better time yeah. um, than possible. And it actually looks like Aphelia's going to be rotating into hmm. the jungle as well. So, I mean, Drunken's going to have even better time if Aphelia puts Harass onto um, the Sliver. But, I mean, as it stands, I really do like um, the draft and, and just the whole sort of strategy coming out from BMG. Um, because if the lanes stay as they are, you're going to have a tri lane sort of shutting down a lodestone, and that's going to be completely inefficient. While I feel it's going to be you know, farming in, in the enemy jungle, maybe putting pressure on, on the mid lane and the top lane. So, yeah, this is definitely um, the best thing to do, I think. <laughs> so, right there, Prophet War is uh, apparently going to be the game number three here. <laughs> the series, if it goes to that, no, <laughs> could you imagine though? I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to see some kind of competition pop up for Prophet, so it doesn't surprise me. We're talking about that, and that'd be pretty fun, but. Uh, uh, no, so uh, again, I, I look at uh, obviously, yeah, the the Ophelia going to be going in the aggressive jungle here, and uh, his hand's going to reconnect. So it's I'm sure Sync Esports will pick up on that sooner than later too, and eventually make their own adjustments. But yeah, no doubt BMG setting it up how what makes sense off the bat. And I also want to clarify once again, I know no different people tuning in constantly here and there, and just to clarify, Sync Esports, yes, Insania is their new fifth. He's he was that going into the cycle, been now three weeks or so. Uh, they dropped support and they picked up Insania for cycle two here of uh, the Carnage God of our Pro League. And simply put, it was just a team decision. They 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 said uh, support wasn't playing up to up to their standards, I guess, and then they picked up Insani as a result, and again, so he's been obviously playing very well, definitely a great player, and a good pickup, so that's kind of the short uh, short story right there, and yes, it is an official fifth for them, so um, anyways, again, we see that trial end, but you see uh, kind of an immediate rotation almost, uh, as they're really almost expecting Ophelia again to maybe still be here, but obviously that's not the case, and as soon as they realize that, now they both ran past this ward aside that was placed by Hanskin, so plenty of information coming out for BMG right here. But you do see a Minotaur is picked up at the top side. And uh, if Kraken gets out of position now, granted he has that charge, but... Yeah. I'm pretty sure BMG expect... Or oh, middle lane, actually, they're going to go on this truck Master. He they're might be in trouble. Oh, he's in a lot of trouble. The wall's off pretty perfect right there at the angle, and Slap gets credit for the Bloodless kill. Yeah, Fuzi going down right there. I mean, the wall was just... The angle was just so awkward for him to get around. Yeah, but I have to call out, I mean... It's pretty obvious that the supports are going to rotate at least mid to try and set up a gank before they go top because, I mean, they're not going to send a, like, a, a tri lane against Lodestone. They're not going to be able to kill Lodestone anyway, so why keep you know two supports down there? So, I mean, Fuzi has to expect the, the rotation coming out from support. I mean, and he has to play a lot more passive because otherwise that's just going to happen. Like, uh, And, I mean, it's kind of obvious that it's going to happen, so I, I honestly think it's kind of somewhat unacceptable that that, that occurred, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even with that ward aside, again, giving that information. Yeah. So Fuzi definitely misplay, but he TPs back middle right away. You know, what's done is done. Get back to farming. But yeah, Drunken Master considered to be a very strong laner, but uh, Slither at the same time has our range advantage and is also a very, very strong laner. And even in this case, obviously, for now has Empath supporting. So uh, it's going to seem like it might be a difficult time here for Fuzi uh, earlier on in this game. Granted, uh, being in the middle lane, especially his levels, Actually, shouldn't be too bad. Now, Invis Rune is going to be picked up by Zlapped. That is going to be spotted by the Ward of Sight. So, you would hope for BMG's sake that they are going to make sure now to play pretty passive here as Glacius makes a rotation uh, to oh, the middle lane. Oh, I think he's getting spotted by this Ward as well, actually. Yep. Good, good Ward coming out from Zlapped. That's, that's perfect Ward. He knows exactly that. 
Um, oh, he might be in trouble, actually. His liver's coming over. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Ophelia's in trouble. Has that Vagabond leader right here already dropping Half-Life. More auto attacks. He has the poison on him, so they can deny him if need be. But that's not necessary. In fact, they're going for the turn kill. Empath's going to be lunged on. And Empath will fall. So there wants this kill. Maybe deny. No, the deny comes out. An attempt, at least. But Flensmeister, the dot damage just ticking too quickly right there. And gets the kill. And now a port coming in from Empath. <laughs> Still level one. So, obviously, a very quick res. And that should be the end of that. I mean, Empath. Yeah, trying to maybe chase down the glaciers, but he's full life. He's good to go. So good pick, though, on Ophelia coming out there. And actually, Drunken Master, oof, just staggers around, and he avoids oh, the poison spray. That was yeah, close. If that, if that poison spray hit, like, he might have been dropping again, actually. Uh, but no, that's really good wall coming out from Slap. Like, he knows exactly where Ophelia is, and that's the only really way that Ophelia can gank. So that's just actually good support play coming out from Slap. I mean, we normally see him play the jungle, but he's playing really strong, actually, on, on the support role. Huh? Mm -hmm. You see uh, Lodestone actually dropping about Half-Life right there, but again, he's kind of in a sense in that suicide role, the 1v2 down here, uh, against the Swift Blade and Witch Slayer, but he is level 4 at the same time, so that's really what matters. Get those levels and mission accomplished, really. He also has 9 creep kills on top of that. Of course, Swift Blade 18 and 8, though. And Keizu, actually, by the way, the one playing the Swift Blade, kind of just picking up on that. Um, not, not usually his go-to hero, but with the way yeah. things are set up. And that just happens to be the case. Again, again, I'm sure it's just more than fine, but he's not the most difficult hero, so I'm sure it's not yeah, too big of a click, deal. Click R and win. Really. Yeah, press R <laughs> and <laughs> click on somebody and hope for the best. Uh, no, a little, uh, little more complicated than that, but yeah, get the point. <laughs> Philia's getting boxed out here by the Empath, actually. I think that's the, the right call to make. Like, oh, she might be in trouble, actually. Kraken's chasing, but yeah, no, she's fine. fine. Um, what what Ophelia can do now, she can rotate into her own jungle actually, maybe even try and get a pick on this Witch Slayer. We talked about how Witch Slayer isn't the strongest support, and her Lodestone actually really strong high level, actually level 5 already. I think Ophelia, if she does rotate down bottom, she can definitely um, get a kill on the Witch Slayer. Even the Swift Blade, he's only level 3 actually. Lodestone's really got a lot of high levels actually. Um, yeah, highest level above from, um, from Sliver, maybe hiring up just a little mm -hmm. bit more, but I feel he's going to stay top, but I don't know, it's good to stay top, but at the same time, he's not going to get a kill on this Kraken, and I think if Ophelia doesn't get, you know, some kind of involvement, she isn't really the strongest of heroes unless they're going to end up pushing. I mean, they do have a pushing lineup, but not as, say, hard as if they had, like, I don't know, Rhapsody or something like that, but yeah. we'll see what he decides to do in the end. Yeah, we'll he see. might be in trouble, actually. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, he's going to go for the TP. Yeah. If he gets stunned, what's up? Maybe a charge? Oh, the kind of awkward oh. there. Yeah, the Gel Cannon <laughs> kind of getting in the way from Mickey to eventually uh, commit to a kill. So Ophelia does board to the bottom, though, yeah. and I'm sure they're going to pick up on that information. But yeah, still. I think that's the right call to make, though, because now Ophelia is here, it's really actually quite dangerous for Swiftlight and Witchlight to, to be down here, particularly when um, you know they get lane control, because yeah. they're just going to feed. They don't even have a lane ward here, bottom or middle lane, actually. Yeah, they're diving. Slither wants this kill, but he needs to be careful not to get counter kill. The dot damage should be enough. The auto so attack goes off. off. <laughs> it wasn't going to be enough for the kill, but with that auto attack, it secures it. The poison burst, obviously non lethal until the staff of the master. But uh, he gets the job done. Nice cutoff right there of the Minotaur, too, just in case. By Empath coming out. Bottom lane, Lodestone actually going to be pressured. Spin comes out. The creep wave kind of blocked it a little bit, though. So they're going to miss out on a little bit of damage here. And that might be the difference maker. Regen room is going to be popped. And it oh. will stay on in the end. So, yeah, that creep block coming into play. And here we go with Ophelia now. She does have that Minotaur. She's going to send the Minotaur around in the flank. Which, sorry, will need to use the stun on the Minotaur most likely. There we go. He's going to run around the trees. Lodestone coming in, though. Has this rock control. Will he get it off for time? Yes, he will. Which, they're in trouble now. The new comes out from Ophelia. There's the Minotaur stop. And down goes Witch there. And guess what? Loso level 6 now. The spin coming up from Swift Blade. He's trying to get away from Ophelia, but she gets blocked down. But the ulti from Lodestone. There's the Shatter Storm. Putting in the head smash. And there you go. This is why Lodestone was so good. Yeah. And he still is. Uh, exactly the damage right there. Insane, insane amount of damage. But yeah, well played coming up from Hansen. That's exactly what he needs to do. I talked about how he needs to, to rotate down and just maybe secure this lane. That's top lane. Kraken goes down. That's really surprising, actually. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that Kraken falls yeah. down just two heroes. But, um, I wasn't watching it. I, 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 I didn't, but I mean, at the same time, you got the freeze from Glacius, obviously. You cannot cast through that in charge sense, so uh, they do have some decent lockdown and able to do enough damage clear. But no, I did not catch it on camera, so. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's no, well played Kraken Fancy. That's exactly like. I mean, now Kaze is just sort of dropped as well. That's going to really hamper his, um, you know, Farming potential. I mean, and Swift Blade's really the only kind of late game carry potential they have. I know they have Sliver, um, but really it's going to be the Swift Blade in the late game. Sliver's really there just for the, the better team fight for his poles and burst. So, yeah, it's good rotate coming out. And now Lodestone isn't getting even more farm as well. Like, he's going to be like a big threat as well. Like, you saw that amount of damage coming out from Head Smash. Yeah. Though, absolutely insane. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And it's level four now. Well, you also got to keep in mind the Shatterstorm does expose them in the sense that. Uh, 
Uh, causes all physical and magical damage taken to have 100% armor and magic armor pierce. Um, so, wait. Am I, am I wrong on that? Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. Yeah, true, yeah. True, true. So that's, that's going to be like 420 like full damage. So many yeah. true damage result here. A insane yeah. amount of damage there. It's great um, synergy is the point. So. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about like on the other cast. Was like, I think Lotus is definitely still a viable hero. Yeah, he got a bit of a nerf, but you know, some people might just be a little bit, you know, oh, he got a nerf, he's, he's unplayable. But that's not always the case, though. I mean, this hero is still owning. Mm -hmm. so. Now, uh, Slither, 350 gold per minute. With that said, he is the top farmer in the game, Flensmeister. Uh, with those steam boots, another 800 cells gold saved up bottom lane. Load's done. He has a rocket drill. Yeah, he's more than so fine tank. there. What do you think about Witchlayer, by the way, going that level 2 power drain, passing up miniaturization here altogether? I think it's actually not a bad item. Like, if he can you know, take this Lodestone's mana to make sure he doesn't have a rocket drill, I think that's the only way they can kill him. Because even if, if he had um, miniaturization, I don't think they're going to be able to kill him. The only problem is, actually, is that he's going to be stuck at low levels for a long while now. So he's got two more points to make up on for that miniaturization miniaturization and um, to really come into effect because if you expect two uh, points into power drone obviously there's two points away from miniaturization so in the late game um, he's not going to get a lot of farm and that's going to maybe be a, a, an issue actually um, yeah. when it comes to the mid game because it's going to have really low levels on that miniaturization yeah so exactly that's kind of the give and take it, i mean miniaturization it's a very you need at least two points into it for the two seconds because you know the level one's like it's very very minor uh, in that sense. So you now the power chain, we do see the power right there, kind of, ooh, the graveyard's done. I assume he was trying to maybe hit Lodestone as well, but he does get a creep farm out of it, so maybe that was ultimately what it was for. But yeah, Lodestone level 8 now. Again, he's getting those levels pretty damn well, so the farm might not be there, but he is up there with Slither as far as experience goes, and that's a good sign for BMG. Another stun coming out for Witch Slayer. There's more power drain to be used. Top lane, Kraken's charging with the last second. That impalement damage coming through, though. Kraken will end up falling. That impalement level 3 at the time. He does level it up to level 4 right there, but you just see the potential of it, and Mickey's having trouble up here. Yeah, um, I don't know, maybe they could even rotate the lanes actually to up top. I mean, like, you saw the potential of Ophelia going to gank for a Swift Blade. They do have a Warden now bottom, so that should definitely protect them. I mean, if they, even if they rotated, like, the Swift Blade and Witchlight up top, and maybe just send a Kraken Suicide, because at the moment he's just really suffering against this Torture Glacius lane. Uh, maybe he's just playing a little bit too aggressive, perhaps. So they're going in bottom lane, actually, on the load, so he might be in trouble. Yeah, in ports coming in, though. Ophelia's oh. touch comes out, and now here's a chance for a turnaround. Now, Lozon is out of mana, thanks to that power drain from Witchlayer. Torture is chasing, has Chain reactions and Sania does not have boots on him. He's gonna just try to hide here, hope for the best. Probably not gonna work out in the end. He throws out the graveyard now. The chain reactions was used, torture out of mana as a result. No, he has enough now for the Impama with that power supply, and that should tick down Witch Slayer. Yes, it will. Gets the kill in the end. Swift Blade obviously is ultimately able to get away. In fact, middle lane, no, the poison spray just a little bit too late right there, as well as the wall, not the best. Fuzi able to react to it, but uh, good job with the TP support coming out from BMG. Yeah, and you saw that actually the power there of the manager. And if Ophelia's touch wasn't used, or even the uh, the TPs wasn't used, like that was definitely a kill on loads time. He had no mana to use his, his, to use his rocket drill, and um, so his escape mechanism was completely nullified because of um, the you know the, the skill point yeah. coming out from Insania. And I think that is the right, the right call to make. I just think he might be in maybe a potential little bit of trouble when it comes to the mid game when he's not mm -hmm. high enough level. It hinders his potential as the game yeah, progresses yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Um. But yeah, definitely still pretty solid here, and no doubt, uh, although they didn't get the kill, it almost got it because of that, you can safely say. But Lodestone does make its way to the top lane now, and it's going to be a little safer up there. We'll probably see a Torture rotate to the bottom. Uh, no, he's actually porting middle? Yeah, Torture's porting middle right here. They're going to go for a kill, but I think uh, there's a ward of sight here. Yeah. So this is probably not going to work out in the end as far as the gank attempt. Yeah, you see Ophelia trying to go around the side, but realizing pretty quickly that uh, something isn't right. They know too much. Oh, the charge from Kraken misses Lowson, actually. Pretty good side setup on his part. Now, Slither is coming over, but this could be dangerous for the Hellborn team at the same time. Lowson popping the Shatterstorm. Slither's realizing, oh, crap, I'm in a lot of trouble. The Shatterstorm goes off, doesn't hit anybody, but that's because Slither was trying to turn around and ran into the support. So once again, Bad Monkey Gaming, the team support, is really on par here. Yeah, the coordination as well. Like, you saw, like, only half of, you know, Zinc esports really being involved in those kind of engagement. And BMG always have all five. Like They're always on par and completely exactly what they need to do when it comes to team coordination, team fight. And that's going to result in a, in a top tower kill as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's BMG playing really, really well. That they are. So so much for not being the most active as of recently. <laughs> Again, they're showing here in game number one right away that they came to play and, and ready against Sync Esports. And 12 minutes in, they have a decent lead, 3,500 gold lead, 4,000 experience lead. 
Uh, but you do got Sync Esports. You got both Slither and uh, Swift Blade having some solid farm. Uh, Swift Blade actually getting the earlier Energizer. So does Slither, though. So that kind of goes back to that, that discussion of is it worth getting these two Energizers here? Uh, especially this early on. I mean, yeah, I, I don't actually like it. I mean, before the pre, or before the nerf on the energizer, I would have said, yeah, it's fine to get you know two energizers because the stats it offers obviously is so good as well as the you know the the, the bonus movement speed mm -hmm. passive. Um, but now obviously it doesn't stack as well. Yeah. I I just don't think you know to put it on both heroes. I mean, I think it probably would be fine to put it on Sliver, but maybe have uh, Swiftblade go for the Abyssal Skull, um, perhaps or even more of a farming route. Uh, Torture might be in trouble actually. Invis Swiftblade. Yeah, Torture is kind of going back and forth as almost he knows he's kind of here, but obviously he doesn't know. This Torture though, he's in trouble. Now come the Swift Slash. He's like, wait, why? Why is my life dropping? Oh, that's why. Down he goes. Yeah, that's got to be a frustrating situation. He thought he had an easy kill. And yeah, little did he know, that's why Empath was running right into my arms. <laughs> because an invisible swift blade happened to be nearby. So yeah, good pursuit coming out right there. But yeah, I, I, I don't want to... I. I don't want to suggest that that's miscommunication, but you are right, especially with that change energizer where now it doesn't stack kind of like the astrolabe. You really do yeah. got to kind of scratch your head a little bit at that. But at the same time, you know, if they're spread out, which they tend to be sometimes here and yeah. there, it's obviously powerful for that aspect. And it gives yeah. both of them the phase effect, granted. He already has yeah. as much as on Swift Blade, but yeah. No, like, it's kind of cool on both of these heroes. I know in, in like, TMM, Swift Blade Energizer is like, completely cool. And it's the same with energy, uh, with um, Sliver as well. So I can't understand that. I just think maybe you know they could have just maybe switched up the items. But it's not the biggest of deals, though. Um, I just think maybe if it was pre-nerf Energizer, it would have been a lot better, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Lodestone level 10 now. He ports back to the top lane. So again, his farm continues to not be the best. I mean, he's 245 gold per minute. So Jonas Fan doing enough in that sense. Now, overall, not a whole lot of crazy farm going on in this game. No one's like way, way far ahead, but Torture is leading the way right now, 350 GPM, and it does seem like, again, he's kind of playing that carry Torture style here, but uh, I assume that Neophyte's book is going to safely turn into a tablet of command here. Um, uh, yeah, I guess, but he, I think he could even go um, Numb's Wisdom as well, actually. True. It's potential, because, I mean, they've got quite a few sort of pushing sort of heroes on this team, and, and I don't think anyone's going to get Abyssal. Um, so I think Gnome's Wisdom uh, for the Ring of the Teacher effect would definitely be picked up here. I mean, we don't normally see it, but I think it definitely has a potential. But I mean, the Tablet's obviously, obviously good as well. I just yeah. think maybe the, the Gnome's Wisdom is a possibility. Yeah. Or middle lane, actually. Both are good for that team presence. You do see middle lane. Drunken Master has the Untouchable, of course, and Empath tried to use Essence Link, but obviously that's what Untouchable does. Prevents you from doing oh, so. Man. Swift Blade, bottom lane. He's taking a lot of damage. The Skeleton King Ned, so powerful against Swift Blade. For that reason right there, even with the spin, he'll get locked down because it's physical. And no chance to escape, so good gank being set up right there from Hanskin. And again, the, this Ophelia not as prevalent of a hero anymore, but if there's one team you still got to be really worried playing against it, it is BMG in the hands of Hanskin. He knows what he's doing, to say the least, uh, on this hero. So good support right there and setting up another kill uh, at the bottom side. You do see Sink is going to be defensive here at the tower, and they're going to be fine. Witchler is level 6 now, so you got to keep that in mind. He has that 500 damage coming out from his silver bullet here. And hey, if he gets a staff of the master, it becomes true damage. Or superior magic, I should say. Okay, it's not true damage. It's not that OP. <laughs> it goes through shrunken, doesn't it? It's yeah, it goes through shrunken head, though. I, I knew they made it, I thought it was true damage for a second, but no, it's just, just superior magic. And it also still increases the damage, but yeah, we're probably not gonna see that, so. <laughs> oh well. Uh, it is a yeah, tablet, no, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so much farm, though. It's particularly on a secondary support, he's not gonna be able to farm it. Perhaps if he was on like, you know, um, like initiator role, like short lane or something, perhaps, but. Yeah. Not, not in this case, no. Uh, tablet is finished on Torture, so there's the answer there. But again, I, I actually like what you're suggesting there. I mean, they don't have a Ring of the Teacher of the Buff. They're not going to get an Abyssal Skull, unless Ophelia maybe, but that isn't going to be for a yeah. while. Uh, so Gnome's Wisdom most certainly could be a solid pickup here, but he does get the Tablet out of the way first. And, you know, that is obviously great. It's, it is in most yeah. cases, and you got your Swift Blade, your Kraken and whatnot, good against them, so. Yeah, you can't really go wrong with Tablet Command pickup. It's just so, like, Cookie cut build kind of on torture as well. So a split push coming out here. Whoa, big die from Truck and Master. Witch Slayer's graveyard hit though, and M Patch ups right inside for the getaway. But this actually could be interesting because okay, you no, know, he's not gonna. I was gonna say they both could die because of that, but Truck and Master actually falls back as soon as uh, who was that? That port in Swift Blade. Yeah, Swift Blade ports in. So now the bottom lane. I thought they were really pushing that heavy, but they don't actually really commit to it, even with the Swift Blade port middle. They decide to fall back actually. So. Almost, uh, almost think that might have been a missed opportunity right there. I mean, they have pretty damn good push, and they were going, but man, 
They play it safe here. You like that, or would you like to see them go a little more aggressive? Mm, I mean, I don't think uh, Drunken Master or um, oh, someone else was mid. I think it might have been Loso was mid as well, perhaps. Like, they just weren't True. always five, and, and yeah, they could have you know, rotated everyone down here bottom, but at the same time, that would have been like somewhat of a reduced efficiency in terms of ganking. And also, it's just risky. Like, if they were pushing just 3v5, like, could easily get initiated and, and put um, Zink back into, into the game. I mean, they definitely have the strong pushing lineup, but they don't have to you know, go all in push. It's not like they have you know, no other kind of late game. They do have Drunken Master, and I mean, Torture, you know, late game has definitely got potential as well. So, mm. yeah, they, they will definitely start pushing, but it doesn't. They don't need to sort of rush it. You know, just keep it safe and, and reliable. Yeah, Lodestone 1875 gold now saved up, so that portal key is uh, going to be coming up here. I believe I just saw an Abyssal Skull purchase. Yeah, on Swift Blade here in the meantime, on the Hellborn side. And speaking of portal key, Kraken looks like he's going to be close to his as he has 2100 gold saved up. So we're starting to see those earlier game items start to shine across the board now for either side. So speaking of that too, Fuzi has 2,500 gold saved up, so not going to be the Soul's Bulwark here. I guess uh, maybe just going to go straight into a Shrunken. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be straight Shrunken because, I mean, like, although he does have the uh, untouchable, like if he gets sort of graveyard stunned and then he doesn't get the untouchable off, he can get completely um, sort of locked down. He doesn't he doesn't realize that uh, which like doesn't have any points in uh, miniaturization. Uh, yeah. Which is this is what we're talking about. Like, if it comes up to a team fight, that CC or lack of CC coming up from Witchlight can be a, quite a big factor actually, because the power drain is more there just for the laning phase. But you know, when it, now it's into the, the mid game, it's kind of be uh, kind of awkward to, to lock anyone down actually without that kind of set stun. Because I mean, they have the empath, but other than that, they don't actually have a set stun other than other than the Witchlight's graveyard of stun as well. So. Yeah. On top of that, though, Slither obviously he's, he's always a good reason to get shrunken head against. Mm, uh, when, yeah. when you're playing against him. So, for that matter, Barrier Idol, too. We'll see if maybe Lodestone becomes a candidate or even the uh, Ophelia uh, for that later on. But, anyways, here comes that bottom push. All five are going to end up here. Uh, Sync Esports only has three here currently, but I'm, I'm sure that they have TPs in the other lane. Just double. No, Witchler doesn't actually. So, this is this should be a free push. Yeah, in fact, Lodestone going in. Rod and Slither right here. There come the TPs, actually. But Slither's going to drop before even get out and getting off his poison burst. And that is a pretty big deal. Ophelia's touch still hasn't been used either. Sink Esports, they do not want to commit to this fight, yet they are. Drunken Master, he's dropping. He gets the Ophelia's touch off. They will get the burst kill, but will it come at a cost here? Lowstone with the Shadow Storm. And look at Swift Blade. He gets the Swift Slashes off, but as soon as he comes down, he just melts. It basically died right before that, anyways. He knew that he was dead at the end. Witch Slayer, he ends up falling too. Empath, he's going to most likely be picked off as a Rocket Shell stun will hit. And maybe, oh my god, he actually gets away as the port is coming in now. And now BMG will have to start falling back. He's putting the port back on a low stone. Low stone trying to kite them. No, he doesn't oh. get ported back in time. Just a little bit too long at this point. And uh, he does get the kill. So Mickey, good job right there, at least responding. But that should be the end uh, of the fight right there. But yeah, Sync kind of committing when. Will they go in Ophelia? Oh, actually, yeah, they might. They very likely will. Nope, they're not going to chase. Maybe still. Oh, the regen. Okay. Oh, <laughs> he wanted to pick it up, but then he went back in. The big wall from Empath, and sure enough, he goes and picks up the kill. So there you go. Actually, Ophelia killed at the end. That may that yeah. may have swayed it for Sync's favor in the end. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, that is really well played, actually, chasing. But the, going back to the initiation, that was perfect initiation coming out from Jonas. They saw that which they didn't have a TP. I mean, he did get, eventually get one from the Kuri, but mm -hmm. that's definitely what they need to do. Like, if they can engage, like, obviously, 4v5, then they're going to win that team like, even like even easier. Obviously, I think they've got the, the, the better team fight anyway. But, you know, just they, they realized you know, made the mistake coming out from Insane. They didn't have a TP on him just at the right time when they were pushing. And as a result, BMG did capitalize. And I think they picked off Empath, what was it? Or they picked off someone before the team fight even started. I think it was yeah. the Slipper, actually. It was yeah. Slither. He didn't even poison burst. Like, exactly. With how that, yeah, for how that started, Sync actually ended it pretty damn well. Uh, and then you can only imagine if he actually got the poison burst off, how that could have actually been even a lot worse for BMG. So, but uh, in the end, you know, it's kind of even in that sense, maybe. But you do look at the overall gold lead. It's now six thousand gold lead for BMG at about thirty-eight hundred experience lead for Bad Monkey Gaming as well. So they definitely are. Uh, the team to reckon with right now, and those shrunken heads are going to be coming, it looks like, for both Drunken and Torture, actually. Going to be following up his tablet with that. So, I mean, that goes back to that logic of, you know, you're kind of going against a slither, you got Witch there with the crowd control. Shrunken head on him, too, makes sense to you. Yeah, definitely. The, the only really physical damage coming out from is going to be Swiftly, and that's not going to happen until late game. Actually, Kraken's going to try and kill his Torture on top lane. He's going to jump in. Will this be enough as a question? Remember, he has Talbot of Command, but Empath is inside. That's going to be the big difference maker, if anything. There's a Talbot oh, away okay. as the Essence Lake wears off. Yeah, perfect play. Good Can't timing. 
you wouldn't expect anything other than limp to be honest, but that was just really well played. I think I thought that was guaranteed kill on, uh, on torture. He was do dropping so quickly, but yeah. good stun and then tablet at the perfect time. That, I mean, if he got stunned there, I think Kraken would have maybe gone back in, but just perfect timing coming out from limp as usual. <laughs> Look at these wards in the middle lane, man. Flensmeister abusing the power of Slither right here. Oh, this is one of the reasons you like you like to see him. I mean, just to think that these wards used to be a lot stronger way back in the day. Uh, for for several different reasons, but uh, even now they are still you know powerful, of course. And yeah, they're just really annoying. Like, <laughs> yeah, that too. Especially especially when you're trying to push against them, like the amount of counter push they actually offer, it's just actually quite absurd. So, Sliver obviously good pushing, but has good counter push as well, just because the ward itself. Mm -hmm. You do see middle lane. Okay, no, you see actually uh, speaking of Slither, he's got the uh, uh, sacrificial stone here, so. Got the nice little armor buff, and especially gets the likes of Drunken Master. Pretty good to have. And Drunken, speaking of, he's going to be sent back to base right Okay, to get a shrunken head, that's why. So, uh, Fuzi has that now, and again, Torturous is coming. And I, I can safely assume that as soon as Torture gets that shrunken head, we're going to probably see some good uh, push coming out here from the Legion side and looking to take advantage of that and make some team fights happen or take towers instead. So, Sinky Sports, they're going to have an interesting time here in the very near future as far as how they're going to respond to it because that's not easy and they don't even wait for the shrunken head on torture they just say screw it we're going to go mid at least the first tower and that is going to be an easy tower. it's almost denied actually but very good tower coming kill. in actually they don't want to try and fight this is close there's witch slayer they do stun torture actually kraken falls it up and here we go torture dropping half life talbot's out though poison burst in the background and only a drunken and he has a shrunken head so not really a big deal swift blade gets pushed back in and swift blade will fall back to back fights he just melts as soon as he gets touched i mean he has 1300 life and some decent armor and whatnot but it's just how much burst potential bmg has with the likes of drunken master and lodestone especially yeah, and I mean, it's just like didn't even get his ultimate off his either. Like, and this kind of affiliate pick is quite strong against this Swiftblade pick. Obviously, he's got the uh, the three minions, but that's gonna obviously bounce it depending on RNG actually. So that's um, quite a little you know, factor to, to factor in in terms of team fights. But yeah, like Swiftblade not even getting the Swift, uh, Swift slashes off, but that goes back to a really well played character from Jones Man. He was like almost like five, like you know, a thousand units away from the team fight, making sure he wasn't get, getting seen to channel up his ultimate. And then he came in perfect rocket shoe and just burst his swift blade down before he could get anything else. So, yeah. poor play coming out from Jonas fam just had the patience just to stay away from the team fight. All right, we'll pause coming out here. Obviously, uh, Mickey, you know, he disconnected. That usually means they do it manually. So, maybe just a quick fix that he's doing and then going to join back into the game. But, yeah, once again, you have a case. You also brought up an interesting point earlier that uh, K or Insania – you would think it's really playing more of the secondary support here, especially I've seen a lot of wars being purchased by Zlapt, but, I mean, you look at the farm, <laughs> he's just not having it compared to Zlapt especially. And yeah, Zlapt even and has this, Striders and a major totem here. Yeah, this just goes back to, honestly, because um, Witchlight's getting picked off in team fights. It's not really to the bad play by anyone, but also, like, Empath's being involved in a lot more kills because, obviously, you, know, you can just jump inside someone and set some uh, like a gank up a lot more easier. Uh, and, and it's just because of the... Um, you know the assists coming out from Empath and, and the lower deaths coming out from uh, from Empath as well. Uh, I mean, but we normally do see a senior actually. You know, goes and gets his farm on even in like a lane somewhere or even like in the jungle perhaps. Uh, we, you know, in, in Rex, as we used to see him almost like run like a second support as like a jungler. Almost he spends so much time in the jungle, but it's useful yeah. though. Like it, with a second support like that farm, could really make a difference in team fights though. Absolutely, but yeah, that goes back to again. You kind of compare that to really the Ophelia, because that's where you kind of have to, is in terms of where they're playing, the roles that they're playing, and obviously Ophelia having the much better time here. Uh, it's very safe to say. So that's no doubt another negative there for Sync Esports as to why they're down here. But if Witchler can manage to get a portal key, which despite his lack of overall GPM, he does have 1,100 gold saved up. So gets that portal key, and that actually will give him strong initiation, of course, between his crowd control and his burst potential. And he's almost level 11 on top of it all. So, you know, again, when he gets the portal key, his impact will definitely start going up, or at least ideally. But, oh, look at Empath. You are in trouble. <laughs> that is a lodestone with his ultimate ready to go. I mean, I would think he could honestly kill oh, he's him. Gonna yeah. get seen. He's 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 gonna he is going to be seen by but He needs to go now. There is the rock. No, it's not going to go off the top of the Oh, it does go off. Oh. Empath didn't jump inside Swift play, but it doesn't matter. Swiftblade just chops him down, yep. <laughs> that was a really risky play. I mean, he saw, like, he channeled Ultimate, which is fine. Like, that's just RNG that Swiftblade was there when he started channeling it. But he saw Swiftblade and he still went in for the kill. I mean, he had 
adequate time just to PK out and just maybe yeah. just get home. Instead, he, he went for the man up kill, and, and that's so, so risky. Like, if he doesn't kill him, like, and even if he does kill him, he's going to die afterwards. After, you know, Shatterstorm comes up, 100% armor and magic armor goes onto him, and Swift Play's there. He's just going to mop up the kill on Lonesome. And I think, honestly, that was a bit of a misplay coming out from Jonsson fan. Like, even if he does get the kill on an Empath, it's not going to be worth it because he's mm -hmm. going to definitely die, like, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, missing the rocket drill, that was the obviously the difference maker right yeah. there. He hits that, that's the easy, easy kill on Empath, but like you said, even so, probably still would have died. So that was basically the worst case. Scenario that happened right there yeah. for uh, for Jonas fan out of several scenarios. So 1900 gold saved up though on Drunken Master. Again, he's got the Shrunken on top of the Ghost Marchers. Torture also pulling up a little bit of gold as is Ophelia. He's got three heroes here that are going to be buying their next tier of items, but uh, you still have all three secondary towers up for uh, the side of Sync Esports. And it, I don't know, is that surprising to you, especially with this push potentially on the start mm. here for BMG? I mean, it is like, kind of surprising because of the team fight, but at the same time, we talked about how you know, Legion do still have like, quite strong. Um, late game potential as well, but at the same time, like Kraken's picked up its portal key now, and, and Kraken honestly is probably one of the best um, sort of heroes to defend a base with or defend some towers with, because <laughs> you can charge him all the way back. It's almost like Gauntlet Hook, but you know, with your own person. Yeah. But at the same time, you set up with like the perfect release of the Kraken, and, and like someone can get bursted down before anything goes off. And, and when you're assault on the base, like it's, you obviously have the the disadvantage because you're you're showing yourself and, and things like that. And it's just harder to get a good initiation out, um, say for like the lodestone. So. Um, I can understand what they're not doing, and at the same time, like they're quite far ahead, but I think they've decided that they are going to stop pushing now, as we can yep. see. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing here. Their middle lane, Boundai is on Empath, so it's all them to have there, of course, as always, but uh, they're going to need to defend here, and probably not, though. It's, it is just a little too threatening. So no chance of defense being put up by Sync Esports, and we'll probably see, in fact, going in. Oh, the Rocket Shield stun hits, but obviously they're not really going to bother. That's where it's kind of awkward <laughs> as it sends them back. That that leash range is really long and that rocket range. It is, yeah. like, pork it, pork it all the way back. Um, yeah, great iron pickup actually here coming up from the load zone with the barbed armor because we talked about how after the shatter song goes off, he's going to take oh, tons yeah. of damage, but then why not just turn it or return it onto the enemy team? So, That's, great yeah. Up here. When, when he was really powerful in the scene, that that was definitely one of the more go-to builds. I was thought of exactly for that reason. So, uh, Congor, it's going to fall. I mean, Sync, again, I don't even know if they really realized they do have a ward of side, actually, that should have at least... Maybe not. Maybe they just snuck nah, in there just out of range. That, does, that wall doesn't see. It seems yeah. like just before like the little totem here on, on the Congo pit. Mm -hmm. And I think BMG were quite you know, sure just to try and sneak in from the left side. So I don't think they even seen it. But at the same time, if they didn't see anyone on this wall, they probably assumed that it was um, going to happen. And, and even if they realized, I don't think they were really in a position to even contest it. We saw Swiftly farming top. He could have TP'd in, but by that time, it was probably already too late. So yeah. Yeah, Congo does go to BMG. And I think they put it on torture, which probably is the um, the, the preferred choice because you know the amount of mana he's kind of like similar to a doctor repulsor that kind of um, oh, yeah. token he's one of those camp best candidates in the game i think hands down so not a huge shocker there torture can i also clean up these triple stack ancients using the rest of his mana right there with the torment as well as the impalement so glacius actually sneaks in a kill sneaky seal kid right there uh, but no, Torture, 3,400 gold. So where do you go from here on Torture? Obviously, there's a lot of options from your Sheep Stick to whatever else. I mean, Sheep Stick to I me, think, I guess, seems like the yeah, best choice. Yeah, I think Sheep Stick probably is the, the right call to make. But he's kind of squishy, though. I mean, he does have the shrunken head, but... Mm, yeah, I mean, the physical presence isn't that much actually coming out from Swift Blade or, or even the Hellborn team in general. So, I mean, he doesn't need to pretty bulk up in terms of sort of armor because he does have the shrunken head just to survive ability in that sense. So I probably will see the Sheep Stick, actually. I mean, they are somewhat lacking um, sort of lockdown. I mean, they do have, obviously, the, the Glacius and the Lodestone, but I mean, any more lockdown is going to be you know, favorable in this sense. And they've got the damage output anyway, so they don't need, like, Grimmer or anything like that. So. Yeah. Cheap stick is a good pickup, actually. Oh, Swift Blade finishes his frost burn here, and again, Witch Slayer. They're gonna—he's gonna get the rest of these ancients with this last dragon kill. It's gonna put him just shy of the portal key, but he'll basically have it as time's gonna tick away. So he has the portal key now, and you know, decent timing because BMG—they're gonna push the secondary tower up top here again. I don't think they're gonna defend it. Uh, they're just gonna say they're at a point of you know we we just gotta defend our base because these towers are falling way too quick. And the team fight obviously very, very strong once again on BMG. So there's the portal key pickup on Witch Slayer, though. Out comes the Empath Wall to start at least a little bit right here. But uh, BMG is going to make the conscious decision to push into the base. Swift Blade is still bottom lane. Lowstone hits the stun. Kraken goes in on the torture, though. He has a token, remember. So don't want to commit too much on a kill. In fact, they don't even get the kill. Drunken Master jumps in the back of the untouchables up. And Slither barely alive. Not for long, though. He does go down. Drunken Master staggering away. BMG committing quite a bit into the base. But it might not matter in the end. Kraken's going to end up falling. Shatterstorm goes off right there. Down goes Kraken. Empath comes out as a result. She ends up falling. And Swift Blade going to spin in the background. Now Slither buys back. 
Smith Slash just go out. A pretty damn good bounce is right there. They get the one cone of Drunken Master, and they are chasing them out. No torture. He did die, but it comes back up with the token. The Torment's doing oh. so much damage, though. Look at that AoE from Torture. That's why you give him token of life. Perfect example right there. As I say that, though, he is dropping. He may just fall. Oh, feel the port back. Not in time. It does not go off yet again. And he does fall when it's all said and done. We do see Ophelia now. Is this going to be a genocide? He's going to try to escape. Oh, the Slither Ward will spot him, though. And Hanskin is going to end up falling. It's going to be a genocide hold here for Sync Esports. Well, well, well. Yeah, and well, I have to say, like, Zinc Esports are probably one of the best teams to defend their base. Their coordination is just so, so, so good. Like, you saw the charge back coming out on, on Kraken from Torture. It, it completely uh, cut off Torture from the rest of the team. And then that sort of caused, um, you know, BMG to sort of rotate even more heroes in. And then they end up buying back on Sliver and, um, and Empath, which is the right call to make, I think. They need to defend this Frax. And, I mean, if they, although they did use buybacks, the defending against a token BMG side is, is probably definitely worth it, obviously. Um, and I mean, it still shows that this game is still anyone's game, really, to defend, yeah. to defend like racks that sort of push. Uh, good job by them. Yeah, I think the biggest thing you get buybacks were used, but you know, Swift Blade, their carry hero presence, uh, what did not use a buyback there was Slither, Kraken, and Empath. So yeah, that's where you look at it. Maybe not as big of a deal, but still, the three buybacks is. Same time a good amount, but yeah, pretty necessary when it's all said and done. But they did get a genocide out of it, so still well worth it. But BMG, you also got to maybe put a little bit of fault. That, that happens, though. Even the best teams, they get a little bit too tunnel vision some of the times in the heat of the moment. Yeah, they, they were diving quite deep right there, almost nearly to the shrine to mm. commit to some of those kills. And that's where it's really dangerous, especially when that base tower is even still up in the first place. So, uh, But kind of reset some things, the big thing to know for BMG is that uh, Torture still had 5,000 gold when he died right there, and now he's sitting on 5,400 gold. So, again, it's leaning towards probably the Sheep Stick. In fact, there you go, the, the Acolyte Staff and the Blessed Orb picked up. He just needs a little bit more gold for the Mana Tube now. So, once again, these next tier of items going to start coming out. It's going to be that, the Sheep Stick, the Barrier Idol going to be finished here on Ophelia. Very strong, as always, against the likes of Slither. i got to think Demonic Breastplate is probably going to be coming out here soon as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you could go Shieldbreaker on Dragon Master. The amount of damage you can do with Shieldbreaker is insane, but it's the the mic is probably better for the the whole team. Um, but also, it's going to help with pushing as well to the, the, reduce the tower as well. So yeah, probably the right pickup to make. You see, Drunken Master kind of farming the bottom lane by himself again. The secondary tower down here, the only outer tower remaining on the side of Sync Esports. So. Uh, slapped. He has that bound die. He's kind of <laughs> pushing back this bottom lane the best that he can by himself. He is going to be fine. I was going to say, he went by himself a little bit risky, but uh, especially with that bound die. But he does stay alive and farms it out right there. Lowstone had an invis middle lane. Okay, he just used it right there. Was trying to maybe set something up, but unsuccessful. So in the end, we'll just walk away with it. How about Glacia? Seal kid here on BMG. He actually has a mighty blade, so he may be working for a shrunken head himself. Still a long ways away, sure, but being 4, 1, and 10, and farming just over 200 gold per minute, he, he could definitely get there in the in the, in the future if uh, the game extends to that point, but obviously Shame if you're BMG. What's up? Shame he's, missing all, Shame he's missing all these last hits middle. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's a support <laughs> player. You, what do you expect, right? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think Legion are probably going to wait for the, the Demonic on Drunk, which he's just got now, so they're probably going to start pushing. Um, they could always wait for the next Conger as well. I mean, they're so far up in terms of gold and XP, mm -hmm. um, so there's there's no sort of rush to do it. And, I mean, Swiftblade, yeah, he's like the carry hero, but he's not really, he doesn't really have enough farm to really be like that super, super scary sort of late-game carry at the moment. He's got, you know, the Frostburn and the Abyssal Skull and the Energizer, but at the moment he's not really doing much, enough damage to really like be like a, a scary threat. Um, to BMG here, so they're, they're not in like any rush. And um, this gonna sort of chill back, maybe wait for the next Congo, wait even maybe wait for another item on Lodestone, and then uh, push their way into the into the racks. Yeah. Uh, Swift Blade here. What do, what do you think? The finish the full Dawnbringer. Or mm, get a, get nah. a different route. I, I think the Dawnbringer is sort of there just for to help farming or even some somewhat ganking potential. I think he needs to get like somewhat even damage, like either go brutalizer perhaps, for maybe for the extra lockdown, or even just straight wing burn. Um, I mean, Drunkard's going to be doing absolute tons and tons of damage, uh, as well as Bloodstone. Uh, and I think maybe the, the evasion will help him quite a lot. I mean, yeah. I don't think they're going to get savaged anytime soon, actually, on, on BMG. Yeah. They're trying to set up here on the... Bottom the lane, plate. Ophelia. Yeah, the spin comes out, though. He couldn't get the Skulls of King Ned off. Must have been just out of range. Minotaur stun! No, yes! Oh, that had to be a split second. 
I thought actually Swiftblade had the getaway, but he does not. Now he's in a lot of trouble. Obviously, Drunken Master going to jump in, and that should be a Death Swift Blade. He puts the Swift Slashes out, but there's too many minions right there. And uh, he's still juking. He's still trying. Casey doing everything he can. But obviously, it's not enough, especially with a double damage Drunken Master. That helps. So. Yeah, Philly is actually a really strong counter against Swift Blade. Those mm -hmm. Skeleton Kings are really, really um, useful. Uh, that's really why Hanson's actually gone for the, the, the two Skeleton Kings, one Myrtle composition. We normally see one Skeleton King and, and two Myrtle compositions, so that could be the, the reason. I mean, there is. Uh, I've seen a few Myrtles, but he sort of just decided to farm them instead of pick them up, so that could definitely be the reason why he's um, going for this two Skeleton build. Mm -hmm. Ooh, top lane, yep, so there's going to be pretty safe right here. As far as the top lane, kind of hugging the trees. But in the meantime, he's going to probably need to get back and put some defense up because uh, Barrier Idol just picked up by Ophelia, and they're going right to the top lane. They don't even care about the others. Obviously, this is already exposed on the melee rack, so Lodestone already starting to beat on it. Torture is here as well. Has an impalement. Is going to use it right here, and we're going to need to see a pretty quick response out of Sync Esports. And vulnerability comes out right away. Again, remember, they do have Witch there with that portal key. To be able to jump on and get some initiation. There we go. The miniaturization on the Drunken Master. Kraken with the follow-up. Drunken's pretty damn tanky, though, especially with the demonic, but not taking enough. He just gets bursted down. Torture in the meantime. Shrunken Head is up. He gets pulled in by the release of Kraken, though. If this touch is going to be used, Torture cannot tap it because of the Shrunken Head. He's going to end up falling. BMG overcommitting once again. A little bit too much right here. Kraken's chasing in the background on Iglesias. Lozone, he already shattered Storm. He is now exposed. He is going to be fine for now as uh, Witchler is locking him down, though. Swift Blade is not going to be chasing Ophelia, who's diving the base. He just simply is trying to run away. We'll get back to that later. Lodestone is going to fall Thanks. back to Ophelia. We'll get the oh. port out in time. But Sink Esports, you said oh, it. They're, they're a masters of defending their base, and they show they, it yet again. Oh, like, I mean, again, they saved the racks. They're like 10k gold down, and yeah, they, they, they use the buyback come out from Swiftplay, but man, I have to talk about this witch lad doing absolutely so much work in the team. Like, you saw the amount of damage they posted down Drunken Master. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, they? Like, yeah. wow, like, that Drunken Master got absolutely nothing off. He didn't even get his Shrunken Head off, or even anything. Nope. They burst him down far too quickly. Um, and this goes back to the witch lad. Now he's level 14 now, so he's got max miniaturization, and now he's really showing his worth as a secondary support, actually. He's doing a lot more than uh, the Glacius, actually, to be honest. Um, and that Porky, obviously, helping him with the initiation. So, yeah, really well played coming out from Insania, actually. Yeah, six seconds of Stun basically between the graveyard yeah. and the miniaturization now with those both being both being maxed out and that on top of the 650 burst damage that he provides a Matic again. Yeah, we saw Drunken Master. If, if he's going to get locked down and not be able to use his Drunken Head, then that's going to be issues there. So uh, that's not really at the fault of Fuzi. That's just simply good initiation coming out from Witch Slayer. But at the same time, again, BMG getting a little too far in there perhaps. But, I mean, it wasn't really. So I don't think that was as bad as the first time around. Again, yeah. more so just great play. Once again from Sync. So BMG, they got to be a little worried here. I mean, that's that's twice now they've really tried to break into the base, and yep. Sync's done a fantastic job of holding it off. And I, I don't know. I mean, late game potential. There is plenty on both sides, so it's hard to really justify either way. I think there, unless you have a different opinion. Mm, I, I think obviously Legion do have the, the you know the late game. But I think Hellborn maybe has it just in favor. Bottom lane, oh, illusions, man. This mini map is like causes <laughs> <laughs> me so many much trouble. Yeah, I think Hellborn do have the slight advantage in terms of late game because although Slippery isn't the hardest carry, he still does have the potential to carry, and uh, they have got a lot better late game sort of lockdown with with the Kraken as well as the Witch Slayer as well. Mm -hmm. um, and Swiftblade obviously probably the harder carry in, in in favor of uh, Torture and, and Drunken. So um, I mean it's definitely sort of close, but I think Hellborn slightly edge it. Um, and I think BMG was somewhat. I think it was the right play to make that to push up top because it did force the buyback out from Swift Blade. So you know, at least they got something out of it, even That's if true. they did die. But they they could have maybe played it safe and gone for Congo, which they're going to do now. Uh, which definitely think is the right play to make. I think uh, Sink might defend it if they know it's here. What they're going to do? Yeah, yeah, but again, the question uh, is, do they? Know? I mean, the Warder side isn't a better spot. They should have seen this. I mean. Yeah. No, there's no way they didn't see it, but it's it, it is tough to really want to commit to this, especially when you got Legion team boxing them out. You see the Geometer being the illusions coming in to scout it. Lodestone, ooh, bottom lane. He was actually trying to gank right there on a Witch Slayer, but uh, Witch Slayer doing a good job of crowd controlling him and getting away. But there's the token picked up by ooh, Drunken Master gets it this time as round. So okay. we saw what happened last fight, but I don't yeah. know if that's still enough justification because mm. Torture is good with the token, man. He is, but at the same time, like, it's the sort of physical prison. Now it's sort of in the late game, 40 minutes in, it's the, really the, the physical damage that really have the, the preference in terms of damage right now because the strong and heads being picked up as well as the magic immunity from Swiftblade. And I, I think actually it might be the preferred pick. I mean, like, we saw they focused down Drunken last game and they might obviously 
be doing the same thing. And, and if and if Drunken can't get anything off, like the physical presence is really lacking, and so your BMG's team fight is lacking. Um, and so I don't think it's as bad as you know them putting it on Torture in terms of sort of the first game. We see Torture picking up a portal key actually, so yeah, that might be oh. another reason why they put it on Drunken, so Torture can sort of stay out out of the fight, okay. and Drunken can just hit hit the base for that sense. Yeah, yeah, so he's going to be have that strong initiation tool, especially with that Sheepstick, obviously. Portal Sheepstick on any hero is always a very, very strong combo of items to have, especially one that relies on intelligence, thus is torture. Uh, Drunken Master, I will say this too, I was looking at the damage charts, looked at it a couple times here. Obviously, no surprise there. Torture is up top, you know, slow to the top for the Hellborn team, but Drunken Master is last. Uh, I guess just slightly ahead of Empath on the Hellborn side. So we're 40, 40 and a half minutes in. If it's still maybe the early game, sure, but we're 40 and a half minutes in now. I feel like that should be a little higher. Mm, um, no, I think you're right, though, but I think at the same time it goes back to really hero damage is only sort of really being caused in terms of, sort of the team fights because they're not really fighting like, you know, in the laning phase, obviously. Um, and obviously in the last two fights, Drunken Master's been completely locked down in terms of you know, focusing, so that could obviously be a reason why his hero damage is quite low. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, BMG... <laughs> Third time's a charm is what they're hoping for, at least. They're all five up here. You do see Sync Esports already somewhat set up. They got a water side. It's actually about to wear off here, placed by his lap just out to the uh, bottom part. So uh, they're going to have vision for a little bit longer in this spot. But uh, again, that is going to be wearing off in about 29 seconds here in counting. Uh, as Keizu pushes the bottom tower. So once again, Sync kind of getting an, an advantage out of this as well. As they're yeah. delaying it. We're going in. That's an illusion. <laughs> the good thing they didn't use a whole lot. Cause yeah. Kraken doesn't have a buyback here either, so I think BMG's going to take this fight because they don't have the buyback potential, actually, of, of, uh, of the last team fight. So we'll yeah. see there. Here we go. Witch Slayer looking for that opportunity. You see Drunken Master. He's in the front lines. He has the token this time, so it does make it more difficult. Shrugan goes off right away. He jumps on a swift plate in the back. Low Stone comes in with that barbed armor pop. There's that Shadow Storm. Shrugan Heads are up, though, including Kraken. And he's holding his ground. Kra uh, Kraken charges Torture. Torture's deep into the jungle over here as he's now being chased down by Witch Slayer. Has a silver bullet. Down goes Torture onto the side. He didn't have the token, so he's not going to be resurrecting Witch Slayer in the meantime. Low Stone jumping on him. But again, they are deep into the space. Now they do get the barracks killed right there. But here comes Swift Blade chasing back. Slither buys back for the second and final time, by the way. And now Ophelia, she's going to be caught behind. She ported back somebody, I believe. Now she's going to die herself. And now Drunken Master and Glacius. Glacius escapes barely. And Drunken Master should be fine. He has a token as well, remember. He's going to keep staggering here as well as the Ghost Marchers. I don't think he's going to be found. So, yeah, uh, he does get away. They finally, finally got the melee racks. But it still was not easy. No, definitely not. But... I mean, this team fight was completely different in terms of game, or the the, um, the team fight one and two, because Kraken didn't have a barbat. We mentioned that obviously before the fight, but that was honestly such a big factor. He he did get obviously the, the release to Kraken off, but not having your kind of lockdown slash sort of initiator in those you know, engaging on long long sort of term team fights was a big deal. And as a result, I mean, being, I mean, Zinc did hold eventually. They did lose their melee racks, but I mean, that could have been completely different if uh, Kraken did have a buyback. Yeah. How about Lodestone, by the way? He has a frost field plate. I don't even know if we mentioned that, uh, but uh, he had that even in that last fight. So another solid big item there. But yeah, Drunken Master, the token of life is going to be wearing off here. I believe he just purchased level 2 shield breaker. Uh, make that level 3 shield breaker, actually, in the meantime. And there's another blessed orb on the wing courier, actually. I wonder whose that is. Probably Lodestone? Yes, uh, it Lodestone's, is. Lodestone's, yeah. He's going to go for the sheep stick. Um, but I actually do like the frost field plate coming out from uh, Lodestone, though, because obviously the... It's kind of almost like a, another team farm because the the minus twenty percent attacks are actually a really big deal, particularly with um you know with the somewhat late game potential of Hellborn, with Swift Blade and Sliver. It's actually quite a strong item pickup. We you know we always talk about you know Astrolabe vestments, mm -hmm. Abyssal Skull, you know tablet. But, I mean Frostfield Plate, uh, Frostfield Plate, sorry, is uh is definitely a, a team farm item that doesn't really get picked up a lot and doesn't get mentioned, but I think it does really, does have a, a strong potential in, in the team fights to to help out uh, in the team fights. Definitely, definitely, Witch Slayer. You know he's he's get, he's at that very dangerous point now. So sure, earlier on, uh, we're talking about the miniaturization, and it's going to need some time to build that up. He didn't have the best farm, but he has a tablet portal key now. He's level 17, so he's kind of maximized in that sense, uh, including that level 3 ultimate, 850 magic damage just straight to the face. So, you know, it's kind of joking about the staff of the master earlier, but <laughs> honestly, I would not be surprised if that uh, is a possible follow-up. But uh, we'll see what uh, what he does. Follow this up with, you see right here, he's kind of... Sneaky deep around. into the. <laughs> he wants to he's go going fishing, fi I he's guess. He's going fishing, yeah. Yeah, we don't <laughs> nah, eat. He's, do 
he's doing the right play to make actually. You see what he's doing because he's not actually showing himself bottom because he saw uh, you know BMG rotating mid and he wants to stay down there to try and um, have some kind of counter push uh, if they stop pushing mid. Um, but at the same time, he doesn't want to TP home because that obviously then he can't you know start pushing bottom again. So he's just sort of waiting out here, waiting with his TP and seeing where BMG are. He's probably going to TP home right now because there's no other way he can really get home. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it's kind of an awkward spot to be in. The secondary tower is eventually going to be taken out right here. So he's being very patient. Nope, he's going to go to the creep wave first. <laughs> he wants to kill the creep that's wave. Just, yeah, that's it's, good. it's a greedy, good play to make because yeah. if they can't really push the racks now with this um, you know, creep wave dead. So sneaky play coming out from Insana. But I think it's actually working. You see Glaze oh, yeah. is already rotating back. But I think that if, if they if which side knows, he could TP back and fight. The, Glaze isn't with him. Look. Yeah, no, he's, he's going to be more than fine. Let's go. Oh, uh, yeah. If, if Sync went there, that would have been a 4v5 and definitely in favor of them because Glacius isn't there. But obviously, I don't think they saw Glacius in the end. But Yeah, couldn't get the jump. But exactly, great stall from Insania right there. It, it, it accomplished what the purpose of that was and very sneaky play. And yet again, you can you can ultimately save. That, that's, a, that's a defense being put up and holding them from pushing in. Now, the third Congor is going to be next in line, and I think we still have a couple more minutes here. But I think it's also safe to say BMG are going to probably just wait that out here. And uh, eventually look to do that, just protect around the Congo pit. They do got some bigger items once again, even more so coming out. The level 3 shield breaker obviously already finished, but we'll see what Drunken now goes for next in line with 1,800 gold saved up. Uh, 2,500 more on Torture, actually, so that's another big deal there. Uh, Swift played 2,500 gold, so again, he actually went the shrunken head yeah. here to follow up the Frostburn. It's not a bad iron pick up. Like we normally see actually after Swiftblade, or we've seen this game as well, after you know, Swiftblade finishes his Blade Frenzy, like he just gets jumped on. Obviously he doesn't have any kind of magic immunity and he just gets absolutely bursted down. Too quick for him to get any spells off. So I mean, Shrunk and Head is, is still a good pick up. We talked about him needing damage, but obviously we've said before also that Shrunk and Head obviously oh, almost bottom lane. boost of all. Shatterstorm. Oh, I missed! And now Lostom might be in some trouble. He has the power of armor up still. So thus no silver bullet, but now in comes the power drain. In comes the follow up, and Lodestone's going to end up falling most likely. He does pop the Frostial Flight again. He is damn tanky so with tanky. that armor, as you see right here. But in the end, oh my god, if he no, gets away. No. Jonas a fan. Oh. No, he's not gonna. He makes them use a little more, though. <laughs> in the end, I guess. Uh, and finally gets taken it, out. It delays BMG like a whole minute before they can push because low sense when they're dead. They might even be able to get something out of this. I don't know if Sync wanted to try to <laughs> trade boss down. Yeah. Basically felt like one there, I'm sure, with how long he survived. But, uh, yeah, he is killed in the end. Like you said, he's down for another minute. So I don't see BMG really committing to the base by any means, no matter what items they have. be kind of silly to try to go in without your numbers. And actually, if they're not careful, Sync may catch more right here as Slither is charging. And that's somebody we really haven't talked a whole lot about this game, honestly. It's Flensmeister's farm. He's had Geometer's Bane for a while. He's actually looking to pick up a Shrunken Head. Now he has used those two buybacks, so... That's kind of a big reason why his items may not be as progressed as you would expect. But uh, still, once he gets that shrunken head again, he's, he's doing plenty for his team too <coughs> as far as his presence. And as I said earlier, the top damage in the game, not, as far as his team goes at least. Again, that's not a huge surprise, but good job from him. Uh, I have no clue what they're saying, so... I have no... I'm English, man. <laughs> I know, I I know one language, that's about it. <laughs> yep, me too. Uh, I know a little bit of Spanish. That is all. Como estas? <laughs> That's, that's pretty much the... the hola, hola. <laughs> hola. I know that. Uh, 3,500 gold on Torture, 3,300 on Drunken Master. So, again, they, they do got some big items going to be coming up here. Uh, but you, you really got to respect Zeke Esports, and not only with these holds, but this is still a game, man. I mean... Yeah, definitely. Again, you can you can, you can, you can argue that they have the stronger late game. And actually, all oh, Torture's going to be caught right here. This is a big pick if they can successfully do it. Here comes Ophelia. She will mitigate it. Some of the actions, but it's not enough. Torture just melts right there in the end. Ophelia's having to stand his ground. He has the Ophelia's. No, he doesn't have Ophelia's touch. Still on cooldown. He ends up falling right there. Rolls down with a big shadow storm to counter, but Empath is the only one that's going to fall when it's all said and done. The portal key's happening all over the place. Drunken Master is still chasing, though. He's putting an auto attacks. He's got a double damage rune. So dangerous. In comes a graveyard stun, though. The Unprotectable is not up anymore, but Slither still cannot withstand that damage. So somehow, BMG will fight back and eventually win that fight in the end as they force them back all the way. Yeah, it's because the BMG buybacks coming. Oh, they're still going bottom. Oh, 
Yeah. So close, Port could come out from Witchlight. Yeah, it's because um, Torture pulled back as well as Handskin, and now they're like, okay, that was actually probably better for them because now they can turn on, on Sliver and, and Empath. I mean, Sliver doesn't have a buyback. This could definitely be mid for actually, and this could definitely be in favor of uh, BMG, actually. Yeah. Start uh, backfiring. Oh, no, there's a big Sheepstick. Nice Tabitha on a Swift Blade. He's in a little bit of trouble. He picked up a Slayer, by the way, so more damage is going to be coming out. There's a spin. Torture dropping. Torture is going to fall once again when it's all said and done. However, the dive on a Witch side after the side, he's going to be picked up, but they need to be careful not to overcommit like they've done before. BMG chasing into the base. It gets the Kona Kraken. Will it get the Kona Swift Blade? He pops the Strucker Head. The auto attacks proved to be too much. That Barbed Armor! He's critting himself right there with that Barbed Armor. That was a big misplay from Keizu. And oh. he may fall because of it. The Shield Breaker proc. No, not enough. He barely stays alive. And look at where BMG is in terms of positioning. They are deep into the base yet again. Untouchable is up for Drunken Master. Which they're chasing down. Has a Portakey in one second. This is not done just yet. He goes in. No stun though. The rock Control comes out. He didn't cheap in time. He had Ministerization, but... Did not use it for whatever reason, oh, and Jonas no. fan is going to survive, as well as Drunken Master. Whew. I mean, oh, that was so close. I mean, they, again, though, I mean, B, I mean, Zinc do still end up taking or defending the rats, and now they're looking to take Congo, but oh man, that would have been even better if they could get low. But it's not the biggest deal. I mean, we talked about how Zinc, amazing at defending their base, and I mean, they're definitely claw claw clawing this, uh, you know, this game back. The golden XP is slowly reducing. The XP is actually in favor of Zinc right now. And although the 8,000 gold lead, we saw Torture actually doing absolutely nothing in that team fight there. He's really sort of fallen off in terms of sort of carry presence, actually. Yeah. Uh, dying almost instantly to, uh, to Swiftblade. And, and now Swiftblade's getting farmed up. He's getting close to his Savage Mace if that's what he decides to go. And this is going to go YOLO bringer. But, um... <laughs> Oof, man. Hey, with the way the game's going, I, would you would you be surprised yeah. by that? I'd, I'd honestly definitely go for the Doombringer. Uh, yeah. It's definitely worth it because I like, think about like, yeah, I mean, it's yes. definitely risky, but at the same time, they're in come somewhat of a bad situation. I mean, they're, they've got no more buybacks on the Sliver or the Empath, and only one more on, on the Swift Blade. I think they should just go all out now. Like, honestly, I think it's really, it's all in strategy. They're going to probably take this token as well, put it on the Swift Blade. If they can get a Doombringer, like, that's going to be almost game breaking. Uh -huh. um, I think they should do it, honestly. Just go for it. All Why in. Why not, yeah. Uh, so, because of the seizure screen, actually, <laughs> because it's, it's rumbling all around because I was on Conrad and Paws. So, I'm actually playing some Plinko. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. I got a bronze chest and then I got a gold chest on my first two rolls. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> People are going to say rigged and everything. I <laughs> swear to God it's not <laughs> rigged. I swear to God. <laughs> I, hey, I do it all the time on my personal stream and I never is this lucky. That just... That just happened, though. That's pretty good. It's too rigged. I I mean, whenever I, I play Plinko, I never get it. I don't even know what the skin is. Kosak. I don't even know. It looks like maybe a Sandra skin? Let me check that real quickly. It's, it's, it's Gunblade. Gunblade. Yeah, Gunblade. Gunblade. Gunshot. Really? Yeah, I think so. Kosak. Uh, Kosak. It's Gunblade. You're right. Really? Damn, I know my old avatars, man. Apparently. Jeez. That actually is pretty cool, though. Um, well, congrats me. You're all jealous now. I think um, I'm a Plinko only, actually. <laughs> hey, how about this? I'll, I'll, I'll give that skin away since I won it on stream here. Uh, I'll give it away after the, uh, in between the games. How about that? I'll give it away in between the games. So there you go. I'll for break those people it. in so chat. Nice, just so. check out for I, the uh, keyword in chat. I would have just took it and kept it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. What is this about? So we unpause and then pause again. Okay. So, back to the game, though. Back oh, to the game. Savage. He does go Savage. Boring. Boo. No, just kidding. Uh, Keizu gets the Savage Maze. Token alive. Bananas drop as well, remember. And Swift Blade picks him up, actually. So token went to who? Slither? Okay, yeah, Slither. I think I yeah. think it should be the other way around, actually. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, though, because he does, Swift Blade does have the Shrunken, so like, he can sort of survive a bit better than Swift, uh, than Sliver, sorry, because if Sliver does get bursted, I mean, actually, in the end, thinking about it, it probably was the better decision. I just think if, if the Doombringer was going to go on, on Swift Blade, Big, I mean, big jump, big jump into lane. This is the big chance for a kill. Swift Blade, he takes a shift. The Explodes comes out. Down goes Swift Blade. Again, if he's able to get that combo off and Lodestone, that will happen. Obviously, Torch doing plenty as well, but Tor or Swift Blade's dead. He's not buying back. Just like that, it could be yep. game. Yeah, and that's why I wanted Token to be on Swift Play because he yep. didn't actually have buyback before and doesn't have it now. He's very close to it, but oh, he has it now. Okay, this could oh, okay. be held. This could be held. But, wow, yeah. <laughs> he just very got close. it, could, yeah. 
I think this is going to take um, BMG by, by surprise. He did pick up the Savage Mace, so they might not be expecting this. Yeah, yeah so they feed, figure they have a free kill. They're going to keep an eye on that. There we go. Simply by his back. Kraken goes into the background. They're focusing torture. Nice tab, but out initially. He's taking a lot of damage. Oh, he finally gets out of the way. Kraken still committing to the chase. Still torture. He's playing very defensive. Lowstone comes in. The sheep on a Kraken. Kraken's going to end up falling. Torture in the background. Stay alive. Swiftblade now diving for the kill as well. Oh, that barbed armor that spins him. And doing damage to Swiftblade as a result as well. The ring around the freaking Rosie. The team are coming to play. Limp stays alive. The Swift Slash is coming out now. And Swiftblade is still well alive himself now for long. The lockdown's going to start to happen now. And Ophelia coming back in. There's Drunken Master. He puts the focus and down goes Swiftblade. Ophelia is picked off. Slither holding his ground. He does have that token alive. Hope Witch Slayer is off to the side with that... Uh, with no mana though, so not much more he can do. Okay, so this is gonna fall right here. Comes back up with the token. The barb timer low stone will end up falling. And now Drunken Master on his own, but oh never mind, he has torture. Still somehow is alive. No! Hope Witch Slayer gets the kill. But it's now a one versus one. Drunken Master versus Witcher, and I think you gotta give it to Drunken Master here. <laughs> when it's all said and done, but oh Witch Slayer, can he make a big play? I don't know. Uh, I mean Well I don't know though, he's tanking creeps. Yeah, uh, he's he's not he doesn't even really regen right there. He's just worried about the sacrificial shrine tower. Okay, he's not even gonna go for it. One thing to point out though, though I think you know obviously buying back on Swiftplay was definitely obviously the right thing to do. But I mean they initiated him well before Swiftplay was even in. He didn't. Oh, they're going in. Does he have enough burst damage? Is the question. He's gonna, he needs to use it. Oh, he used it, but it's not enough for the kill. And here comes Lodestone, a witch slayer. He's now gonna feel the pain for sure. There's <laughs> lunge. And down he falls, Drunken Master solo on life, but doesn't care. And he ends up getting the kill and ends up falling back. So the other deep at the tower at the shrine, will it fall right here to the creeps? Lowstone going in actually. He has the stun to use, Kraken going to avoid it, but doesn't care. Lowstone will actually just get the tower kill and expose that shrine. So Sinky Esports, again, it all goes back to the swift blade being picked off. Even though he had yep. a buyback in the end, yeah, it's Definitely. that that was huge. Just both in terms of positioning and then not having the token. Yeah, and when they took that team fight, when he pulled back though, like he pulled back, but by that time, like he was like he was so far back in, at base, and, and the team fight was you know in front of their racks middle lane. He had to run all the way from the fountain, and and by that time he sort of wasted sort of ten seconds, like you know just running instead of being in the fight. And I think that honestly was a big difference of why you know BMG won the, the team fight and and why Zink lost it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if Zink sort of held on for five seconds to wait for Swiftplay actually to be to be ready, I think that team fight would have been somewhat different. And, um, in the end, it wasn't. I mean, they're definitely you know, still holding on. They've lost two racks, but I mean, it's still not over. Um, but this is where I think Doombringer would have been, you know, definitely the <laughs> maybe the way to go. Put it, put the token on on the uh, on Swiftplay. Like when you get Doombringer, like if you get get token, it's like almost so much better because it's less risk of you losing, it, obviously. Um, yeah, well, yeah, of course. And then and then and then Swiftplay's a great candidate for yeah. Doombringer in general too, because of the Swift Slashes, the invulnerable state, and the amount of crits he could happen. Exactly. With an item like a Doom Ringer, it just puts out some big, big numbers. Yeah. So I just think you should do it. Like, I mean, he's if if you're behind, Doom Ringer is probably almost the only item to really get back into the game. But the guy yeah. in bottom lane actually don't pick up loads, and he just uses Q. But he also has the portal key, <laughs> which he uses right there to get away. So good reaction by Jonas Fan. What's going on over here? Glacius actually running in an empath, kind of just a back and forth love fest. But he does have his support coming in. In comes the uh, the slow from Glacius, but. No chase to be had as Empath jumps inside a teammate and runs away. Uh, Lodestone does finish the sheep stick, by the way, and is going to start heading back towards the middle lane with the rest of his team. So, again, this game is not 100% over, but pending some miracle hold here from Sink Esports, which <laughs> you, you look at teams right now, they're, they're probably the top of the line as far as defending their base, as we've been stating, but now it's... Uh, very, I mean, hell, look at these items here. Behemoth's heart about torture and, oh, oh Drunken Master Witch are going to be caught out. But the response from Kraken, torture dropping. He has that Behemoth's heart, but will he be taking enough of the end? No, he wasn't. He gets taken out. Meantime, Shatterstorm going out for Lowstone right there. Swift Slash is bouncing around. He takes a couple of barbed armor hits as well. Lowstone is dropping, but so is Swift Blade. And that's what matters for the Legion team. Lowstone does fall. They get the Swift Blade kill, though. He is not buying back this time as he is out of buybacks for the time being. Kraken. Getting caught in the background. He's going to be locked down by the Skeletal King. Meanwhile, over here, a couple of fights going on. Drunken Master still alive. They're just CCing him as much as possible. They're trying to keep the Slither alive. The wall even comes out, but he's like, screw it. I'm just going to go for Empath now. Nope. Jumps inside his Slither. <laughs> Making life difficult on Fuzi. Okay, is what okay. they're doing. Does he have the... Oh, he puts the hex out. There's the Porter Key, buddy. Oh, he jumps right into Ophelia, though. <laughs> Little did he know that the supporting cast was right there, and now Insania is going to be that picked was, off, so... That I, was very, that was very yeah. questionable there. I think he could have definitely put a key down, maybe got a, bought a TP, but, I mean, not the biggest of deals, but... 
Oh man, this is the last right. Can I defend is the question with three people. I think they might be able to. Yeah, but even so, it's this hole is so huge now in favor of BMG that even if they hold right here, it's like, what is that really doing in the end? Other than just delaying the inevitable. So yeah, they are going to push them back. BMG making probably the correct decision of why even risk it. I mean, you look at the middle and top lane, the work is doing. The Shrine's already at half-life. It's still going down. And they're going to constantly have to defend those. Obviously, no Mega Creeps, but still, even even just with the uh, two rack sets being down, it's still plenty, plenty of damage coming out from those Creeps. Codex well Courier ain't coming. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Oh, but he's bought Codex, he doesn't even have mana on it. Wait, yeah. <laughs> I don't think this Fusey's realized what he needs to do. Oh, they're going to put the mana ring from Aphelia onto the Courier. Okay, yeah, some teamwork right there. But oh, wait, it's just, it's just the pattern, yeah, it's not even the actual Oh, he's going to switch up the Coast Marchers, I think, maybe. Well, you have switch to do that at base, though. Oh, uh, yeah. You can't do uh, that, like... Really, that was really weird. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I think they're just trying to have a little too much fun here, and... It's not going as planned. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it, that, that's when you know also it's – I mean, there is some legitimacy to that. We've seen it before, the Air Force Codex, uh, actually. Yeah. There was that – God, I forget the game that that it was, but the Storm Spirit, I think it was on the Codex – or on the Courier, and it made some big yeah. plays with it. And and, and the Zinc Reason game, actually, not you know not yesterday or today, but the last series before, um, Keizu had a Sheepstick Courier, made quite a big difference as well in the team fights. Yeah. So. So we do see right here, bottom lane, Drunken Master going to lead the way down here. But you got Seek Esports at the same time. It's They're, they're just they're, they're hoping for a lucky pick here, I feel like. Trying to maybe get somebody left behind, but that's not the case. BMG is all grouped up as they should be, and they're making sure that uh, that they're going to be uh, as difficult as possible on Sink Esports. So with the middle on top being pushed in, here they go to the bottom lane now. So here's one last chance for Sink. Even with the hold, though, again, it's arguably over anyways, but why not give it a shot? Torch in the meantime, he's going to be pushed really far forward, but here comes the supporting cast. Lozen included with the big shatter storm in the background, which there just melts right off the back. Kraken, he's going to end up falling, and the GG well played is most likely going to be following suit right here in the end. So, yep, there you go. BMG will take game number one here in this best set of three over sync eSports. Takes about an hour here, just under that, but BMG yeah. does come through, and Sink gave it a was damn valiant effort, though. Yeah, and that was game one. Like, yeah. Man, looking forward to the series. But yeah, really well played coming up from obviously BMG, but Zinc as well. They held on so much further than I expected. Um, but I think it all goes back maybe down to the uh, the pickup on Swiftblade, obviously not having the token. And, and even questionably not even going Doombring, which I think he definitely could have and, and maybe should have actually now looking back on it. But that's just, you mm -hmm. know, 2020, um, you know, whatever the word I'm looking for. Good old of. hindsight. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. But uh, any end. Obviously, we'll play count from BMG, but a very close game, and I'm looking forward to game two as well. Absolutely. Uh, anytime these teams play, uh, always looking forward to any of the matches that are that are to come. And you know, what a way to start things off. And again, it is only game number one, so Sync Esports going to be fighting back for.